AQA, A-level physics, uh, turning points, uh, and this is video number 12, and it's the second part uh, of, of special relativity. It's also the last video in this series. Ah, oh, never mind. Anyway, let's nash on. So, now, um, we've talked about time dilation, and we've talked about uh, length contraction. So now we're going to talk about mass. So special relativity and mass. Now consider this, two metal plates and there's a voltage between them and in between them there is a proton. Now what's going to happen to the proton is the proton will accelerate, won't it, between there and there because it's in an electric field uh, and the proton will gain, <coughs> excuse me, will gain kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy it gains, well, W equals QV, and it's a proton, so EV. So it will gain EV, E is its charge, V is the accelerating voltage, and the kinetic energy will be a half MV squared. So every time the proton goes through these plates, it will gain kinetic energy. Now, we could do this again and again and again and again, which is what happens in a particle accelerator, something like a synchrotron. I mean, you have to be a bit clever with the voltages so that, you know, it's it, the, the proton comes in and then it's, it's accelerated and then it leaves. Uh, so you use an AC supply, which is synchronized so it can do that. But the point I'm making here is that you could give it more and more and more and more energy as many times as you like. So does that mean that the proton gets faster and faster and faster and faster? Well, the problem is that, uh, as we saw in the last video, there is a limit to how fast it can go. And things with mass uh, cannot travel at the speed of light. So when the proton approaches the speed of light, we can't make its velocity any bigger. So what happens? We give it kinetic energy, and if we give it kinetic energy and its velocity can't get bigger, then that means that its mass has to get bigger. Okay, so its velocity can't get bigger, its mass has to get bigger. Uh, M naught, M naught, we call that the rest mass of a particle, such as a proton. That's its mass when it isn't moving. OK, now when a particle is moving, its mass gets bigger. We don't normally notice it a bit like time dilation. Unless something's moving very, very quickly, we don't notice the change in mass. Things have to be moving very, very fast to get any kind of measurable difference in their mass. Uh, however, when you're talking about things like particles in a particle accelerator, it, it does make a difference, a significant difference. When we give the particle energy, its mass increases. Now, does that mean that mass and energy are the same thing? What you can do is you can think of mass as being a very, very concentrated form of energy. So mass and energy, they, they are interchangeable, yes? And hence this equation, which I'm not gonna derive, because uh, it's beyond me, very famous equation, E equals mc squared. And that tells us how much energy you could get from a certain mass. Uh, and looking at that, a mass of one kilogram, if m equals one, that would give you three times 10 to the eight squared joules of energy, nine times 10 to the 16 joules of energy. So one kilogram of mass is a huge amount of energy. It's lots of energy. Look at this. The, now the energy released by the sun comes from nuclear fusion. Uh, and in that reaction, mass changes into energy. Yes. Uh, and the mass of the sun actually gets less by 350 billion tons every day. But as the mass of the sun is so huge anyway, it's about something times 10 to the 30 kilograms. You know, it's going to last a while yet. Don't worry, don't panic. But uh, the mass of the sun actually gets less as it releases huge amounts of energy. Uh, the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima, 
uh, about 1.1 kilograms of mass was converted into energy uh, when that bomb dropped on Hiroshima. A huge amount of energy from a, a relatively small mass. E equals mc squared. Now, some equations now. So, E rest. This is called the, the rest energy of a particle. We've got the mass is m naught, that's the rest mass, and we say that the rest energy is m naught c squared. It's the amount of energy that you would get if all of the mass changed into energy. Yes? So the rest energy of a particle is the energy you would get if all of the mass of the particle was converted into energy, the rest energy. And when a particle is moving very, very fast, then we have its total energy equals, and there it is again, the gamma factor, the Lorentz factor. So E total is gamma times E rest. Now, unfortunately, at AQA, you've got to use this equation here. Instead of just saying E total is gamma times E rest, then you say E total is uh, m naught c squared. That m naught c squared, that is the rest energy, which I was just talking about. And then that, that is times, the rest energy times, 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So this is the energy that you are given on your formula sheet for AQA. Uh, and I, I much prefer that one, which is what we use in OCR. The total energy, yeah, another expression for the total energy is the rest energy plus the kinetic energy. Okay, now looking at those equations there, here are some questions for you to have a go at. Uh, pause the video, have a go at them yourself. And the answers are in three, two, one. Okay, so our gamma factor uh, works out at 3.2. Again, at AQA, you don't work out gamma factors, but it just makes life so much easier, you know. Um, nevertheless, gamma factor 3.2, so your total energy uh, no, your rest energy, first of all, is 0.94 giga electron volts. Your total energy is uh, about 3 giga electron volts. And your kinetic energy, uh, 2.06 giga electron volts. Uh, here's a graph of mass against velocity. Um, notice that... Um, the mass doesn't change very much unless you are traveling very fast. Uh, then as you approach the speed of light, it's basically the same graph as the gamma factor. Yes, so not much change until you start approaching the speed of light and then it shoots up an awful lot. OK, and you can't go faster than the speed of light. So there's nothing after one. Yes, and that is mass against velocity. And it's virtually the same graph as the, the gamma factor. Now, kinetic energy and velocity. Uh, this is an experiment you need to be familiar with. Uh, done in 1962 by William Batozzi uh, at MIT. Yes, Michigan Institute of Technology. And basically what he did was he accelerated electrons and he got these electrons moving very, very fast. Uh, he measured their velocity using an oscilloscope. Uh, and then the electrons hit an aluminium plate and their kinetic energy changes into heat energy. And then he measured the temperature rise of the aluminium plate. Uh, and that told him how much heat energy it gained. And that told him the kinetic energy of the electrons. So electrons were accelerated by a large voltage, uh, given energies between 0.5 and 15 MeVs, mega electron volts. Uh, the velocity of the electrons was measured using an oscilloscope. Uh, the electrons struck an aluminium plate, so their kinetic energy was converted into heat. And then the heat energy was calculated by measuring the temperature rise of the plate. Q equals MC delta T, yes? 
and basically uh, his results, his results for velocity and his results for kinetic energy agreed very closely with what you would predict using special relativity. So he confirmed the special relativity. He got good evidence. If you look at the graph of kinetic energy against velocity, again, uh, it doesn't go past one because you can't travel faster than the speed of light. Uh, your Newtonian, uh, in other words, not including special relativity, the kinetic energy would just increase there like with V squared. But then if you bring in uh, special relativity, then the kinetic energy goes up there. You never get past V equals equal to C or V over C is greater than one. Kinetic energy shoots up like that. OK, this is from a, a video uh, on YouTube, which was actually made around the time. That's William Batozzi there, that fella there. That's the two pulses on the oscilloscope that are used to measure the velocity. That's the aluminium plate that the electrons hit. Um, see if you can find it yourself. It's a really interesting video. And that's it. Special relativity done and dusted.